And now we move on to questions to the Minister for Regional Development, and I call Mr. John McAllister. Question number one. Mr. Speaker, uh, in publishing my draft uh, bicycle strategy, I set out uh, my commitment to develop specific design guidance for cycling provision in Northern Ireland, which will encourage more people to adopt cycling as an everyday mode of travel. This work is still ongoing, and I am keen to explore best practice elsewhere to develop the most appropriate cycling design guidance for Northern Ireland. Uh, and this is why my department facilitated a training seminar on cycling uh, for transport NI engineers as part of a round uh, of uh, visits to Northern Ireland by the Cyclist Touring Club and the Cycling Embassy of Denmark <coughs> to promote uh, new, uh, new design concepts in 2012. Sustrans have also delivered training to Transport NI engineers in August 2014 on their new design guide, uh, Handbook for Cycle-Friendly Design. Uh, more recently, I hosted a very successful uh, conference in Belfast to promote cycling. As part of this conference, Transport NI engineers attended a training workshop with Transport for London uh, to discuss and debate new standards for cycling design. And Commissioner McAllister for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'm grateful to the Minister uh, and encouraged indeed by some of his response. Um, the Minister will no doubt want to spread the cycling revolution out uh, beyond just urban areas. We now, does he agree with me that it's might be time to look at shifting the investment decisions for uh, cycling and other non motorised forms of transport um, from just assessing past use or indeed current use? but to possibly build in for growth potential. Would I also, could he also reflect on the two-metre uh, width minimum standard for footpath? Does he feel this puts walkers and families off using it? And would he look at uh, reviewing that throughout Northern Ireland? I'm grateful to the uh, <coughs> member for his um, uh, supplementary uh, question and, and, and indeed uh, the encouraging uh, noises he, he appears to be making in terms of cycling. Uh, and of course, uh, he will know that I am greatly seized uh, with uh, the opportunity that Northern Ireland has to exploit cy uh, cycling to its maximum opportunity, uh, not just in, in, in terms of um, uh, sport, uh, but in terms of broader, uh, healthier lifestyles. Uh, and I think there are huge opportunities, and uh, that's what we're seeking to do with the cycling revolution, not, and, and not just uh, to have it. Um, uh, uh, in place in, in, in Belfast and the Greater Belfast area, but uh, opportunities through greenways, the use of greenways, and the member will know uh, the, the exciting proposals that there are of the greenway potential between uh, Newry and Bourne, part of this area, and the Cooley Peninsula, and indeed other uh, uh, opportunities. And of course, uh, in, in terms of the infrastructure, we continue to look uh, at, at opportunities whereby that um, can be improved. I can. Uh, say that uh, the member will know that um, TransLink NI has recently completed um, a section of shared cycle track and footway from the Byrne Hotel towards Newcastle uh, as part of his constituency. And, uh, and I know that uh, Transport NI is currently in the process of completing the necessary legislative uh, required uh, to, to designate this new facility as a, a, a cycle track. Mr. Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Speaker, and I welcome the Minister's response. W whatever the manuals may say, Minister, are you personally satisfied, given you've invested a huge amount of time in this, that serious progress has been made on the design of roads and footpaths to ensure that over the next, the next decade there will be a serious increase on cyclists using those roads and footpaths? Grateful to the member uh, again for the uh, encouragement that he offers uh, in terms of the cycling the overall st the cycling strategy. And yes, it will take time, uh, and it will take, <coughs> if, if you like, a, a change of culture. But I think this is um, the, the, the benefits for um, more sustainable modes of transport is huge, um, both in terms of the environment, in terms of the, the economy, uh, saving people uh, um, money. Uh, and indeed the, the tourist uh, um, uh, 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 consequences that may well flow, the very positive consequences that may well flow. Now, we, we had a flavour of that through the Giro d'Italia. Uh, but I do think overall, in terms of lifestyle and particularly health style, uh, there are huge opportunities that we can uh, tap into 
and I think we are winning the argument in terms of the, the, uh, the public uh, argument and encouraging more and more people to see cycling not just as a sport or a leisure activity, but uh, as a, a possible um, means of um, uh, affordable transport. I call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to give the Assembly an update as to progress on the Belfast public bike car scheme and the Sustrans on road cycle training that will be available in conjunction with that scheme and how he believes that will help promote cycling as an active and sustainable mode of transport? Thank the member again for um, the, the encouragement behind his question, uh, and, uh, and he will know that uh, my department has uh, funded uh, Belfast City Council to bring forward uh, the, the cycle hire scheme. We very much hope that that will be in place uh, later uh, this year in the coming months, and hopefully within weeks. Uh, and I think that, that that will again give uh, people the opportunity to see that we are serious uh, about transforming. Um, and not only public transport uh, in Belfast in conjunction with uh, Belfast Rapid Transit, but also uh, the, the enhancements that we've made to public transport in terms of rail and bus, and the, the greater opportunities for more sustainable modes of transport to be used, including uh, cycling and walking. And uh, if it is uh, an encouragement to the member, uh, I, I, I've now taken, to, to taken serious exercise around this uh, complex. Uh, at lunchtime, and uh, he's welcome to join me at that uh, too, so that we can uh, show a, a healthier lifestyle to everybody concerned. I call Mr. Alistair Ross. Question number two, Mr. Speaker. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, following the executive's agreement uh, to meet my department's bid in the January, January monitoring round for additional funding to repair street lights. I can confirm that I reinstated the use of external contractors on the 19th of January 2015 to carry out street lighting repairs to supplement my department's internal resources. And last week, some 4,359 job cards were issued to external contractors. And together with internal resources, I estimate that my department has already reduced uh, the backlog of outages by some 3,000. Currently, the total number of streetlights out is around 20,000. Uh, members will be aware that, due to pressures on my department's resource budget, I had to uh, suspend the use of external contractors for routine street lighting repairs on the 8th of August 2014. My department continued to bid for this money at every possible uh, opportunity. Um, although uh, my department staff continued to fix as many street lights as possible, a backlog of defective lights has been developing since last August. Uh, members should understand that it will take time to catch up. Nonetheless, I am committed to having the backlog uh, cleared as quickly as possible, and contractors have been on the ground since early last week. Uh, and can I make it clear that the funding provided in January monitoring is for this financial year only? Okay, Mr. Ross for supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure the Minister is grateful for the allocation from the, the Finance Minister to help uh, work into that, that backlog. Can the Minister advise the House of when the, the existing backlog will be finished or when he anticipates that he'll be able to catch up on the backlog of some 20,000 lights, I think he had said, and whether he's introducing any new mechanisms into his department to ensure that there's better budgeting of his uh, resources to ensure that this doesn't happen again in the future? I well, am grateful uh, to the member for his supplementary, and I, and I would say at the outset that, that, that I, I need no lectures on, on, on how to manage a budget. Um, if, the budget is, if, if, the, if the budget is properly funded, as it should be, then uh, there, there, there will not be any problems. Um, and I hope that uh, the member can bring that message back uh, to his, his colleagues and that uh, some of the games that we have seen uh, been played out uh, recently can be stopped. Um, can I say that in, in the period uh, since the 8th of August, um, my department has been notified of almost 32,000 street lights um, uh, which were out. Of, co uh, of those, my staff repaired close to 10,000 of the defective lights, or approximately 30 per cent. I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge the good work done by the staff involved, who were um, uh, doing their best to provide a service to the public in very difficult circumstances. Now, uh, as I outlined in my original answer, since uh, I ramped it up last week, uh, we are now requiring um, approximately 600 per day, and, and we hope to continue with that progress. 
Councillor McGee Brady. But, uh, can call you. Um, thank the Minister for his answer so far, and I think you've probably, to some degree, answered the question I was going to ask. It was, could the Minister confirm the number of lights repaired through DSD and grounds of safety? Through, through D DSD, the member said it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 as I've indicated, um, th that's currently where we are. Um, the current um, the, the current backlog of street lighting uh, repairs that has accumulated since last aug August is effectively the normal workload um, of my department's street lighting contract, uh, contractors over a five to six month period. Um, however, in order to clear the backlog as quickly as possible, now that I have secured the necessary funding, um, I have asked that all available resources are put to the task so that that work can be expedited. Danny Kinahan. Uh, speaker. Uh, I wonder if the Minister agrees with me um, that had Mr Ross's colleague, the Finance Minister, made adequate funding available in October or maybe budgeted better uh, when it was first requested that the backlog might have been avoided? Well, I, I, have to say, I thank the member for, for his, his question and, and I, I, I do agree. The records will show that I, uh, I did bid for uh, resources uh, to, to cover uh, uh, this uh, shortfall uh, um, er, uh, as far back um, last year, certainly in, uh, in October, uh, and had uh, additional resources been provided then, then some of the misery that people uh, experienced as a result of this uh, could have been avoided. But people wanting to play games, uh, you know, uh, let's hope that they can be a bit more responsible in the future. Call Mr. Colin Eastwood. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answers thus far. Give, given the importance of street lighting in terms of deterring antisocial behaviour, has the Minister done any studies to, to, to find out what impact uh, these cuts have had uh, on antisocial behaviour and public safety in general? Thank the member for his, uh, his question. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any significant impact at this stage, and clearly um, the Department of Justice may, may assist with the evaluation of that. Um, uh, but certainly, I, nor am I, I, am I aware of any significant increase in, in claims against the Department uh, because of uh, defective street lights. But I, I, as I made plain uh, since August, uh, this was never a situation that I was ever content with or, 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 or happy with. Uh, and I'm very pleased that, that, uh, uh, that finally um, <coughs> uh, my requests for proper funding of, of this service were, were heard and that we can now address the situation and, uh, and move forward. But as, uh, as I have outlined uh, in my original answer, um, uh, that uh, the, the, there are challenges with a with new financial settlement in the budget next year. Uh, and I hope very much that, 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 that we uh, are, are, are not heading towards any repeat uh, scenario, uh, because I think uh, uh, everyone should have learned uh, the lessons of this, uh, and that we, that we need to keep frontline services funded and properly working for the people that we uh, seek to represent. Thank you. And I call Mr. Tom Elliott. Uh, question number three, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Um, <clears throat> January monitoring provided my department with allocations of uh, 5.2 million resource and 3, point, and 3 million pounds in capital. The resource allocation came with the stipulation that it was to be used solely for addressing street lighting repairs and roads and bridges uh, operation and maintenance. It was not to be used uh, to meet the pressure arising from the 20 million pounds uh, release of value from Belfast Harbour commissioners for which I had put forward an 18 million pound bid. As a consequence of the executive not meeting, either full or partially, uh, the £18 million bid I put forward for the release of value, <coughs> despite uh, the recommendation of the, of the Budget Review Group that the issue should be addressed in monitoring rounds, my department faces the very real prospect of breaching its uh, control total. Uh, I have to say I find this position astonishing, particularly given uh, the fact that the Finance Minister's paper in, uh, identified £13.9 million non-rig uh, non fence resource Dell available for further allocations, but recommended that this be taken forward to next year. I have made uh, considerable efforts uh, 
uh, to reduce my department's spend to address the pressure identified. In, ident uh, in addition to the £19 million pounds of cuts, the executive's 4.4 reduction required, I've identified a further 6.8 to go towards release of value pressure, uh, though this is not without risk. The remaining £13 million could only be achieved through service reductions which would, which would damage core services severely and have an impact on public safety. These include stopping winter services and stopping all routine uh, road maintenance. As a consequence, I issued my accounting officer with a direction to continue to provide such services. I call Mr Elliott for supplementary. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and I thank the, the Minister for that. He did mention uh, the £20 million shortfall in, in regards to the, the harbour. Uh, can the Minister outline some of the background to that? and indeed uh, the impact that that has on his ongoing spending within the department. I'm grateful to the, uh, to, uh, the member for his supplementary. Um, uh, I, 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 I think that uh, it was somewhat ironic uh, that um, my request for uh, the, uh, the funding uh, gap to be plugged in terms of release of value uh, uh, was not uh, met. Um, I think uh, it's ironic uh, that funding was released against street lighting repairs, um, possibly in the expectation that it couldn't even be spent on street lighting repairs because uh, of the issues surrounding the, the port and the 20 million extracted from my budget. Um, it was, uh, and I remind the member and the House, that 20 million was extracted from my budget this year and last and spent at the centre. The previous finance minister replaced it last year, uh, but it, um, has, uh, the current finance minister has not this year, despite money being held at the centre to do so. So my instinct is that uh, some people are playing games, and rather juvenile ones at that. I call Mr. Paul Gervin. Minister for, for his answer uh, in relation to this matter, but I just wonder. Does the Minister deem it necessary to look for monitoring round funding to actually deliver what are key functions of the Department of Regional Development? I thank uh, the, minister, uh, the member for his, um, his question. And, uh, and in fact, he, he, he makes quite a reasonable point on, on my behalf and a, a point that I've made consistently, that with, with, with proper funding and the timing of that funding in place, uh, it makes more sense and a department like regional development gets better value for money when it's able to plan ahead in terms of its resource budget uh, and even its capital budget as to uh, schemes that it would like to do and uh, including uh, repairs and maintenance, structural maintenance, all of which, uh, all of that work is better carried out uh, in, uh, 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 in, in warmer times of the year and, and, and times when there is better weather, uh, because generally uh, regional development has, a, has always been a Cinderella or treated like a Cinderella department and given money at a late stage uh, in the financial year, money that could and should be released earlier and would allow uh, greater value for money to, to, uh, to, uh, to be deployed against the important um, <clears throat> uh, against the important uh, schemes that we want to see and the repairs that need to be carried out. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Paul Given isn't in his place, so I call Mr. Jimmy Spratt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, question five. Mr. Speaker, uh, Northern Ireland Water has advised me that Phase One A, the upgrade of Sicily Park and uh, Margareta Park, uh, and Phase One B, Greystown. Greystown and Upper Malone Road of the Glen Machen uh, strategic project are planned to commence in May 2015 with a construction period of two years, subject to obtaining statutory approvals and concluding third-party land issues. The estimated combined cost of both projects is £11 million, with Phase 1B being part-funded uh, by the Rivers Agency. This uh, part of the overall Glen Mahan uh, strategic project was advanced following the flooding of June 2012 and required extensive investigation, design and stakeholder engagement due to the complexity of the, uh, of the solution. There are still uh, some uh, third party land issues to conclude and statutory approvals uh, required for this phase of the project, 
but progress is being made uh, on these. The attenuation of stormwater within Balmoral Golf Club is integral uh, to the scheme, and therefore there has been ongoing engagement with the golf club to reach agreement and uh, enable commencement of the project in May 2015. The remainder of the work to complete uh, the Glen Macken strategic project is a longer term commitment, currently estimated uh, to cost in the region of £110 million. Uh, I can confirm that NI Water has included sufficient development funding in its PC15 business plan to progress the feasibility planning and design work, which will take up to three years to complete. It is important that sufficient time is taken at the development stage to ensure that the best solution is taken forward for this significant capital investment. I call Mr. Jimmy Spratt for a thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer? Uh, and could the Minister uh, confirm that, uh, th th that the temporary work or temporary fix work, as it was described, to alleviate the problem in Sicily Park has now been completed? Uh, and in fact, some of those folks, as the Minister will know, has been uh, flooded out three or four times, uh, and certainly uh, they do not, do not want it to happen again. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary, uh, and uh, to confirm that uh, NI Water completed a short-term investment uh, in the area in September 2013, when over £100,000 was invested to improve and uh, rehabilitate uh, existing infrastructure and, and assist Rivers Agency to identify additional utility services within undesignated culverts in the area. Uh, this work proved very successful, uh, maximising the, uh, the carrying capacity of the existing stormwater sewers, culverts and watercourses within the area and reducing the risk of flooding uh, in the short term. And the Minister has already highlighted the issue of Balmoral Golf Club. Um, could the Minister confirm that officials at the club have indeed engaged in positive and meaningful discussions with Northern Ireland Water in order to achieve a positive outcome in terms of this flood alleviation, but that that positive outcome won't be achieved if ultimately it causes a detriment to the golf club business? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his uh, question, and uh, obviously the, the, the scheme, uh, and it is an important scheme, and I think the member uh, will, will, will not underestimate that, but the scheme uh, design includes proposals to carry out works on the Tukmona st stream within the grounds uh, of the golf club. I understand that concerns uh, raised are technical in nature uh, and associated with the detailed plans for attenuation of the Tukmona stream. Uh, Northern Ireland Water uh, has been actively engaging with the management and the committee of Balmoral Golf Club to address the concerns uh, raised and to find a solution satisfactory to all parties which will allow the scheme to proceed without any uh, undue delays. Uh, and it is my hope that, that that progress can be continued and completed because th this is a, a very important scheme to the local area. Uh, and, uh, and I very much hope that, uh, that we will see the early resolution of uh, and ironing out uh, of any existing issues. And any influence that the member may be in a position to, to uh, not sure if he's a golfer or anything like that, but um, uh, to, if he can bring that, uh, his influence, in a positive way, that would be very welcome too. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, uh, in relation to Balmoral Golf Club and the fact that it is absolutely crucial uh, that uh, the, the stream be, be, uh, uh, and the drainage uh, project include uh, Balmoral Golf Club land uh, in order to provide protections to uh, Sisley Park and Greystone Avenue, for example. How long does he uh, envisage uh, contractors actually being on site within Balmoral to actually do the work? Uh, in, in other words, what is the length of time of inconvenience uh, that golfers might be facing? To the, to the member uh, for his uh, uh, indication of support for the scheme, and the member has uh, uh, regularly uh, lobbied me on, on the importance of, of this particular scheme uh, for uh, that, that area of his uh, uh, constituency. And clearly, uh, the, um, uh, what we would be seeking to do, uh, or what NI Water would seek to do in, in terms of moving forward on this scheme, is to find agreement uh, with, with the golf club. 
and uh, reduce any in, uh, uh, inconvenience uh, to an absolute minimum. I, I don't have timescales in terms of how long uh, the necessary work would be on, on the site uh, of the golf club, but clearly every effort would be made to facilitate uh, the club on the understanding that, that obviously they, they, they will want to uh, continue with as much normal service as they possibly can, and we'll seek to undertake to do that. Sorry about that. Ms. Carolyn McEvitt. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. Question six. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, as the number um, of requests for traffic calming far exceeds the budget available, my department has established assessment methodology to, uh, to prioritise these requests. My officials completed an assessment uh, for the provision of traffic calming measures in, in uh, Ballyholland in February 2014, which indicated there was merit in introducing traffic calming measures in the area. However, uh, at present there are other locations within the Newry area with a uh, higher merit uh, rating, which is uh, a key consideration when work programmes are being formulated. Officials uh, have just this week carried out a manual uh, traffic count at the Temple Hill Road Junction to assess this location for uh, a junction improvement scheme to increase safety by uh, um, uh, improving visibility for road users and to confirm up-to-date uh, traffic volumes at this location. Uh, this information will allow officials to carry out a technical assessment for improvement works at the Temple Hill Junction and will also be used to uh, update the assessment for the provision of traffic calming measures in the area. Uh, this revised assessment should be completed within the next few weeks and I have requested that officials update you with the results. Uh, Bally Holland, um, however, will remain under consideration for traffic calming measures when, road, uh, when works have been completed at other prioritised locations within the Newry and Mourne area. And Ms McEvitt for a supplementary. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. And can I thank uh, the Minister for his answer? But the people of Ballyholland really couldn't put a price on a life. And can I uh, take this opportunity maybe to request that the Minister join me in a meeting on site uh, in that specific time? And I, would, I would allow the few weeks for, for the assessment to take place uh, uh, for the meeting then after that. Thank you. Thank the member for her um, supplementary and, and uh, clearly it, it, it would be sensible to wait until uh, the assessments are carried out uh, before uh, proceeding to the uh, site meeting. Uh, I've noted the request and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to follow that through. Gordon Dunn. Mr Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answers. In relation to road safety generally, does the Minister see the recent television adverts uh, being something that are effective in relation to trying to reduce the number of accidents? And would he agree that uh, more needs to be done to try and reduce accident and, and the risk of accidents, especially in rural areas? I'm grateful uh, to the member uh, for his question. Uh, the member will, of course, know that um, the issue of road safety is, is primarily uh, the responsibility of Minister Durkin. Although, uh, uh, and, and certainly, um, it is the Department of Environment who, who fund and, uh, and arrange the, the television um, uh, publicity uh, associated with road sa safety. That is not to say, of course, that um, uh, my department uh, and indeed the Department of Justice um, meet regularly uh, on, on a regular basis to exchange information and, and, and look. Uh, at ways in which we can all improve the situation, because uh, the tragedies that um, occur uh, on our uh, road network uh, and uh, generally, uh, I think, are, are, are very real to those who, who, uh, who suffer um, as a consequence the enormous grief and the sadness uh, from which families rarely, if ever, recover. And so. Um, uh, certainly, uh, on behalf of my department, uh, whilst uh, we, we certainly work with DOE and other agencies, I think our prime thoughts must all, uh, always be uh, those who uh, have suffered the tragedy uh, and loss uh, as a result of uh, uh, road traffic uh, accidents. And uh, we now move on to topical questions. And I call Ms. Karen McEvitt. Much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Minister, can I ask you, um, 
given that there's an increase in the number um, of patients um, from Nuria Moore and having to travel to Craig Avenue Area Hospital for their appointments for surgery, etc., would he consider meeting with representatives from TransLink um, to discuss the prospect um, of introducing a direct bus service from Nuri uh, to Greg Avon Hospital, given that um, um, people living in South Down or, or indeed Nuri uh, have to travel on at least three bus journeys to get to the hospital? Well, I'm grateful to the, to, to, to the member for, uh, for her question uh, and understand um, the, uh, the rationale behind it. Uh, I, I, I think in the first instance it, it, it may well be helpful that um, if not already if the member has approached uh, TransLink to facilitate a meeting and discuss um, uh, at, at, at senior official level with TransLink, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be kept uh, appraised and, uh, and informed uh, of any outcome. Um, obviously I, I have constituency um, uh, concerns uh, that, that uh, we would, I would probably share with, uh, with the member, uh, but initially uh, it would be a matter for TransLink to look at, uh, assess uh, and reflect on. And Ms McKevitt for a supplementary. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Prince, or Mr Speaker. Um, uh, could I ask the, the Minister then, uh, would he undertake to jointly engage with the like of the um, Patient Client Council and the Trusts in order to bring this matter uh, of really urgent attention to those um, that rely on our transport service to be able to get uh, a direct route uh, from the area, would he would we jointly engage in that? Grateful to the member again, and, and, and I think I, I, I overheard uh, in exchanges yesterday to the uh, questions to the Health Minister, uh, the member uh, making a, a similar point, uh, and of course um, very happy to liaise with, with either the Health Minister or through agencies within his department, my officials, and indeed TransLink can perhaps uh, look at uh, how best uh, this, this uh, issue can be carried forward. Thank you. And I call Mr. Robin Swan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask what resources are available to the Minister in face of the predicted bad weather that's coming to Northern Ireland in the next few days? <laughs> Thank, thank the member for a very helpful question. Um, the, let me begin by uh, saying that uh, the, the displaced Arctic polar vortex um, is likely to have an impact on Northern Ireland in the coming days. Uh, the southerly position of the jet stream, uh, in effect, will pull colder Arctic air over the United Kingdom. Uh, there is the prospect of up to 10 centimetres of snow tomorrow, even at some lower lying levels. And at higher ground, there is the risk of strong winds causing drifting and even, and even blizzards. Uh, I have been advised that, that uh, commuters and travellers uh, are likely uh, to face winter hazards. Uh, therefore, my available fleet of over uh, 120 gritters are available to salt uh, the 7,000 kilometres of the 4,300 miles of main roads in just over three hours which in itself is a massive logistical exercise that costs uh, over £80,000 uh, pounds, uh, every, each time it takes place. Almost 51,000 tonnes of salt has been used so far this season. At the same point last year, just over 35,000 tonnes of salt uh, had been used. Uh, and I hope that, uh, well, that whilst the forecasts are there, that um, we will not see the full impact of uh, the, polar, the Arctic polar vortex. I thought Mr. Robin Swan was going to bolt for home there before the weather came in. Mr. Swan for a supplementary. Can I thank the, weather, the Minister for the weather forecast? So, uh, can the Minister confirm that a full winter service will be available in my constituency of North Antrim? Well, I, I thank the member for his supplementary, and I'm not sure if he wants to be Barra Bess or Frank Mitchell, but, um, or he wants me to be either of those either. But, um, I, I, I am able uh, to confirm that full service uh, will be available in North Antrim in the coming days. Indeed, I, I can also confirm that uh, six salting actions on the scheduled salted network in the Bully Money and Moyle areas, spreading 336 tonnes of salt, uh, were directed from 3.30 a.m. on Friday the 16th of January 2015 until 2 a.m. on Sunday the 18th of January. Um, on Saturday, the 17th of January alone, three actions were directed at 3.30 a.m., 4 p.m. and 9.30 p.m., spreading 178 tonnes of salt, with gritters ploughing snow on affected roads as they travelled. 
Private contract snow ploughing was also deployed throughout the area uh, on many minor roads. There can, of course, uh, be no guarantee of ice-free roads, and I would reiterate that road users should always be aware of the need to drive with care on the road network, uh, regardless of whether roads are treated or not. Um, salting actions take from two uh, to three and a half hours to complete, so there is always the possibility that a journey may start or end on an untreated section. Rapidly um, changing weather patterns uh, also presented particular challenges for uh, officials with snow, sleet, hail and rain showers uh, interspersed with freezing and thawing conditions, sometimes compromising the effect of the salt, giving rise to the possibility of icy stretches. So far this year, an estimated uh, 4.5 million has been spent on the winter service programme. At the same point last year, uh, some 3.7 million had been spent. North Antrim and Ballymena area are mainly salted from the Ballykeel and Ballymoney depots. And during the current season, Ballykeel has carried out 56 action, uh, actions and used 2,834 tonnes of salt. I'm not sure if you need much more. <laughs> Okay, I'll call Mr. Stephen Moutry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can I ask the Minister to outline his department's policy on replacing grit boxes that are removed annually on a seasonal basis? Uh, thank the member for his, um, uh, his question. And, and the member will know that some, I think it's some 4,500 uh, grit boxes are distributed uh, during uh, uh, the winter period. And, uh, and obviously a considerable number of grit piles left at various locations in the region of about 50,000, uh, as I recall. Um, so we do attempt, um, wherever possible, to um, uh, at least leave the facilities available for, for self-help and, and very much recognise that m uh, many communities do uh, help um, to distribute uh, salt, particularly in, in rural areas and uh, in areas where um, uh, particularly the elderly or the more vulnerable uh, live. Uh, I welcome that uh, uh, and I'd like to see that uh, to continue. And I call Mr. Moudry for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the Minister for his response. And can I further ask him, does the Minister find a time scale of over three weeks to replace a grit box on Woodley and Lurgan acceptable? Uh, and if not, will he investigate it, given that several minor accidents have taken place at that location since the 5th of January, when my office reported the box missing? To the, to, uh, to the member, and, and we will un, uh, undertake to uh, investigate the reasons, but more especially to uh, try and ensure as quickly as possible that that uh, grid box, if not already, uh, is, is restored to, to its place. I'll call Ms. Pam Cameron. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Could I ask the Minister if he has any plans to extend the rail network here in Northern Ireland? I'm grateful to the member for um, her, her question, and indeed, uh, the member would probably be aware that uh, some months back I, I did uh, issue uh, future plans uh, for um, uh, rail provision uh, in Northern Ireland, a 30 year um, uh, plan uh, in which we would, and I certainly envisage, um, the, the extension of, of rail uh, travel across Northern Ireland and in various places, uh, because I, I think we can build, in a very real way, uh, no pun intended, uh, the, uh, the opportunities that exist, uh, because uh, I think um, the, uh, the, the success that, that we found uh, with uh, the purchase of the new trains and uh, the restoration of the Coal Rain to London Dairy Line, uh, improved facilities uh, at, uh, at some of our stations, including um, uh, Ballamoney and uh, Portadown and, and Antrim Bus Station, uh, and others planned, including Banbridge. Um, so we, we are, uh, in terms of bus, uh, we are, uh, I think, um, seeing uh, the renaissance of rail travel uh, in Northern Ireland. I think record numbers using since certainly the 60s and uh, heading towards um, records being broken since the 1950s. So I think the opportunities are there uh, and I would like to see the opportunity to be given and uh, monies um, uh, um, given to, uh, to see how we can further develop that network. Ms Cameron for a supplementary. 
Thank you, and thank the Minister um, for his answer, and very much welcome his answer, and agree with everything he's just said. But in light of the news yesterday that Irish Rail are considering an extension um, to its network that would allow users to travel directly from Belfast to Dublin Airport, what plans are uh, in place, if any, to place a link to, um, from our rail link directly to Belfast International Airport? Grateful to the, to the member for her supplementary and, and uh, the strategy, the railway investment prioritisation strategy, which I indicated and which um, <coughs> I, 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 I published uh, previously, uh, does include proposals for feasibility studies of extensions to the network um, uh, west along the road uh, network on the A6 towards Castle Dawson Roundabout and along either the M1 or the A4 or the A3 or the A29 uh, corridors in the vicinity of Dungan and Armagh, and also uh, the feasibility will be considered of reopening the Antrim to Knockmore line with, the op with an option of a future rail link to Belfast International Airport should passenger, uh, air passenger numbers grow towards 10 million, as is predicted by the airport operator. So we are uh, and have been already uh, on the case, uh, and I think um, uh, investment in our railways is, is one way in which we can certainly make a difference in terms of public transport uh, and also make a huge difference uh, in terms of um, transforming um, the way that we travel and the mode by which we travel. Thank you. And it comes to Maeve McLaughlin. Can I ask the Minister to outline his key findings? from the public consultation on the A5. Grateful to the, um, to the member for uh, her supplementary or for her, her, her question. Uh, we have um, and we continue to work through the processes uh, of the A5. We, the latest consultation that was undertaken was that of Tully Bog. Um, we are currently assessing the total number of representations and uh, the quality of those representations in the next stage would be wh whether or not we, we will need to move to uh, a public inquiry after the statutory um, orders, the fresh statutory orders are then uh, made. So um, a, a total of 18 uh, responses were received uh, to the uh, consultation uh, exercised uh, exercises. They have now, um, th these have now been analysed by my department and will take in, uh, be taken into consideration as the scheme and the appropriate assessment uh, process uh, progresses. For supplementary. Good, and, and I thank the Minister for that, that detail, particularly in terms of the, the level of responses. But could the Minister maybe indicate now whether he anticipates that there will indeed be a public inquiry and uh, maybe a sense of a time scale on that? Good. Well, I'm grateful to the uh, member for um, her supplementary question. Uh, the member will know that um, the, the next uh, stage would be to uh, publish the draft statutory orders for the scheme. Uh, that includes the, uh, this involves the publication of the draft, draft vesting orders and the draft direction order uh, to rec uh, together with the environmental statement for the scheme. Um, this, in turn, will initiate a, a six-week public consultation period, um, and during this time it would also be my intention to hold a series of public exhibitions at venues local to the scheme. Um, only uh, on completion of this six-week consultation period can a decision uh, be made on the need for a public inquiry, and I stress that, that only on the completion of the six-week consultation uh, period. Can we then make a decision to, uh, on the need for a public inquiry? Um, although I do have to say that, um, given the scale of the scheme, a public inquiry is highly likely, uh, and if deemed necessary, a public inquiry is likely to be held later this year. Mr. Trevor Lund, I'm afraid we'll only have time for your original question or supplementary. Oh, well, then I'll ask for supplementary first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> could, could I ask the minister, in, in terms of? Uh, claims against the road service and against this department for defective road services, i.e. potholes. Could, could he outline the criteria on which a successful claim would have to be based? Grateful to the, to the uh, member to ask a very ingenious question. Uh, ask the minister how to get a claim paid. Um, <laughs> <which> <laughs> there, 
there, I, I, I'm not sure that I, that, that I should be drawn into such detail in, in the way that, uh, that I've suggested that uh, he's framed the question, and I, uh, uh, having some uh, uh, fun with that. But um, there is a set down criteria, uh, and uh, it is published and available on the department's uh, uh, website. Uh, if it is helpful, uh, we'll, uh, I'll ensure that a copy can be made available to you at the earliest possible. <laughs> Order, and time is up. And the House will just take